What's going on guys, Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this episode today, we're gonna to be talking about the mini NES killer. So basically this video goes out to anybody that has purchased a mini NES killer. This is gonna be a tutorial on how to use it, how to boot it up, what's included, and so forth. So the big thing to remember that my mini NES killer is a Raspberry Pi. Yes, if you see it, this is it. It's literally a mini computer, a Linux based computer that fits in the palm of your hand. And in this is a 128 gigabyte SD card that plays 15,000 games. This is the same system that I do have in my bar tops, but I have this because some people just don't have the budget for an arcade. So you can still enjoy the classics on your regular TV if you want. So it's basically like your consoles, like you would have a PlayStation or an Xbox. You basically plug this in, put it to HDMI on your TV, and now you have 15,000 games. First thing I'll do is I will take a look at what's inside the box that you will get. So the most common one that I do give out is with four PS3 controllers. So we have four wireless PS3 controllers. We have the mini NES killer, and in it, it is an SD card that has 128 gigabytes on it. We also have a little toggle power switch. And on the right here, we have our power brick to the Pi and four USB charging cables. So this is exactly what you get. There is no HDMI included. If you do want one, let me know. There's an extra fee for that. But basically, yes, this is exactly what it looks like. I physically have to use everything you see here to program that little computer. So it will be open. It will be repackaged nice and neat. But just so you can see it, yes, these all this stuff is opened and I do have to physically program each controller and we have to get all the USBs, you know, charged up and working. So keep that in mind. This is exactly what you would get in the box. Please notice that there's no N64 wire controllers. There's no NES controllers, styles controllers. These are the controllers I offer. If you do need something specific or something else, let me know. As far as setting up, it's pretty easy. You're gonna plug in the power brick, obviously. And then we have our mini NES killer right here, which is a Raspberry Pi. So there's a couple things going on here. So you have the Raspberry Pi. We have an HDMI going in. And then here is the little power toggle switch. And then your USB brick goes into here. So, you know, if you don't have access to your outlet, you could literally just use this as your on and off switch. So as you can see right now, it is powering on. A couple of lights will flash red and green. If you do see the green blinking light, that is a good sign that it is working. And basically you'll get a little bit of a loading screen. There's about 200 different loading screens. So you'll see something different every time, some classic stuff, some funny stuff and all that. So big thing is right now we just turned it on and let it do its thing. Just let it run. And in about one minute, it will boot up and be ready to go. At this moment, you could grab a PlayStation controller. I wouldn't turn it on just yet until you do see the logos pop up. So we're going to do no cuts on this. This way you can see exactly how the process is and what happens. So we are loaded up. Now you could take a PlayStation controller. You hold down the button. It's going to connect player one and now we are able to navigate the screen. So now that it's booted up, basically you could use the controller here. I do also send you a piece of paper, uh, basically giving you some basic directions, um, which I'll flash at the end of this video. This way you could see it. So basically you use your D pad to navigate. And the big thing to understand is that when you do first load up, this right here is the main menu. So here it's kind of broken down into big sections. So you have arcade, you have consoles, we got handhelds, collections, and such. So this is the main menu. So let's say we wanted to play some Street Fighter on the arcade. You go to the arcade and then the X button is your enter. And just so you know, circle is your back. So enter is X, circle is back. This now is a sub menu. Basically arcades is kind of separated into, if you want company names and, and such like that. The biggest thing that I usually say to stick with is to stick with MAME Arcade. That's where most of the games are. Press X to enter. Basically, while you're here, you could go up and down to kind of navigate. At the bottom of the screen right here, you're going to see the letter. So, you know, we are in E's. You could go up and down. We right now want to play some Street Fighter. So it's kind of a nightmare to just hold this down. So what I do have is that R1 
is your button next, I mean your letter next, and L1 is your previous letter. So as you can see right now, we are in F. If I press R1, we go to G, H, I, J, K, L. So again, we're skipping the letter just to get faster to the game. So again, we're gonna do some Super Street Fighter just for kick. So I went to T, which is A-OK. -okay. And I'm gonna use up now on the D-pad. Once I find my game, I press X to enter. Once you press enter, just give it a second. It's gonna go through this loading screen right here. And then it's actually gonna load up the boot screen on the actual arcade. So this is literally, if you had the actual real arcade, this is what the whole boot screen would look like. So it gives you a little bit of a warning and now you're in the menu. So on the controller here, as far as in game now, there's a couple things to do. Select is your coin. Start is start. As far as arcade buttons, like how my arcade sticks are set up, as you can see, we have button one, two, three, four, five, six. This right here is set up as buttons one, two, and L1 is button three, four is X, circle is five, R1 is six. So you could do that, you know, if you want. So again, if you think about it for Street Fighter style, this is a punch, this is a punch, and L1 is a punch. X, circle, R1 are all kicks. So another big thing is that we only have one controller on. If you want to do some two-player action, you can literally grab any controller. It doesn't matter which one you do. I'm going to grab a red one. And basically, you just hold down the PlayStation button. It'll blink. And then literally, the LED will show you what controller this is. And now we're on player two. It noticed it. Same controls. I could join the I could press coins, and I could press start. And now we have two-player action. And you could use either the D-pad or the analog sticks if you want. So as far as right now, we are in the game. We have two-player action. I'm able to play and such. So again, buttons one, two, and L1 is button three. X, circle, and R1 is button six. So you could play around in all that and have some fun. Um, real quick, we'll talk about the shortcuts. Uh, a couple things you could load and save states in this. So on the PlayStation controller, it's gotta be player one. It cannot be anybody the player, but player one. So player one, select is considered your hotkey. So there's really three main things that you should know. You could load, save, and exit the game. So let's first load up the game. So you hold down select and you press L1, L1 load, L to L load. So if I hold that, I'm able to load a save state that I was in before. If right now, like I said, we're playing, let's say we're kicking our, our butts and we want to now go and eat and we want to save this, you hold down select and you press R1. When you do that, you will see yellow wording that says that it's saved. So now, for example, if I'm going to, you know, beat somebody up, I can now hold select and L1 and reload the exact same space that we were in. The last thing to know is to exit a game. You're going to hold down select and press start. And that's how you exit back to the menu. So now that we are back on the game wheel, now let's play some Mario Kart on the Super Nintendo. You press circle to go back. You're still inside the sub wheel of arcade. We have to go back to the main menu. So circle again, and now you're on the main menu. We go down to consoles, and then you press X to enter. And you can either look for more systems. Luckily, this one just booted up into Super Nintendo. So we'll go down to Super Nintendo and we will press X to enter the system. Sorry, I'm doing this one-handed. And what do you know, this actually went to Mario Kart, but let's try a different game. So, um, I don't know, we'll look for something in the B section or even, uh, let's look, yeah, let's look up for something in the B section. So, uh, I don't know, we could try Batman. Cool, Batman Returns. So once you find your game and again, you could use R1 to skip letters, so letter forward, and L1 is to go back on a letter. Once you pick a game, you press X, it'll go through its little loading screens, and then you will be playing basically Super Nintendo. So on the Super Nintendo, same buttons as you would in the Super Nintendo look exactly the same, and again, start is start. Same thing, we could load. So if I hold uh, select, I'm actually gonna save. So same thing, we could save a state. So let's say we wanted to save exactly where we were right now. We do, we hold down select and press R1. 
and you'll see that it's going to go into saving the state. So let's just save right now. I'm not playing right now. I went into a cutscene. So I could go to game start, press start, skip the scene. And again, if I wanted to, you know, reload, well, actually, you know what? We're going to save this scene. So I'm going to start at the beginning of this. So in case I die, I'm going to go right back to where I was. So we right now are playing. Oh no, I died. I want to reload back, hold select L1, and we are right back. Again, if you want to exit, you hold select and you press start, and then you're back. Now, real quick, the big thing, when you are done playing, just like you turn off all your consoles, you have to turn this one off. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna press circle, you're gonna go back, you're gonna go back to the main menu, and you go back one more time until you see exit attract mode. When you see exit attract mode, you go up, and then you select yes. Once you see the little pie symbol, you are A-OK -okay and safe to come to your console and hit the switch. And that is it, that is the mini NES killer. So now same thing, let's say we wanna boot up, we wanna play, you basically come to your console and you just turn it on. Again, it takes about a minute to kind of boot up and the cool thing is that after about 10 minutes, the PlayStation controllers turn off on their own, own or if you do turn off the system, the controller turns off by itself. So you don't have to worry about these. Again, you'll get some random kind of loading screens. And what we could do on this one now is that we're gonna go, I wanna play some Pitfall on the Sega Genesis or the 32X. So I right now wanna play some Sega. Let's go through the steps on how to get that. Again, trying not to cut too much on this because I do want you to see exactly how it works. And I should get a tripod. <laughs> So right now, again, we are loaded up. And again, the controls don't work right now because it's off. We're gonna hold down the button. And now it's connected, so now it'll work. So I said Sega Genesis, so I have to go to the consoles wheel. I press enter, or X I should say. And now we're gonna go up. And we could do, let's see, the Sega 32X, that was the Genesis. So I press enter. And again, I wanna play some Pitfall. So right now, my list right now is under the letter S. So I'm actually kinda of close. We got lucky because Pitfall's right there. <laughs> once I pick the game, once I have the game on the wheel, I press X and it'll load. Big thing again is if you do wanna exit, you hold select and you press start. You have to hold select, it's a must, you have to. It's basically a button combination, you have to press select. Let it go through its little loading screens. And again, these are already pre-configured, so you shouldn't have to do anything. This is why I physically open up the controller boxes and configure everything. So Pitfall was a one player game. And again, you could use either the D-pad or the analog stick. So it works both ways. And as you can see, we're playing it. Same thing right now, if I wanted to save where I'm at, I hold select and R1, and you're gonna see yellow wording. So if I die right now, because of the snake, I could reload, hold select, L1, and there you have it. I'm bored, I don't wanna play anymore. Hold select, and you press start, and you're back. So now real quick, we're going to go into four player action. People wanna know about four player action. You're gonna see four players mostly in N64 in, and in arcade. So off the bat, you know we do have our player one controller on. You could turn any of these on at any point. I already turned on all four controllers on, and you'll see, there's a little LED at the top that says how, you know, what player this is. So I'm gonna take my controller one and I'm gonna actually go back into arcade. So I'm gonna go back and I'm back on my main menu. So I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna go to arcade. I always do the Simpsons game. Uh, for this one, I'll do Sunset Riders just for fun. So we are actually already under S. So I should actually be close to Sunset Riders. If not, then it's called The Sunset Riders. Let's see. Again, everything's alphabetical order. Awesome, Sunset Riders, we found it. So I will send you a list of how many, you know, the names of the four player games. Once we have one, we enter in and awesome. So again, let it load up. Same thing for all the controllers. These are coins. So the big thing about some of these arcades is that you have to press coin on that specific controller. 
So right now, again, it's going through its ROM check. This is how the actual arcade booted up. Now we're in. So I can press player one. And as you can see, I'm player one here. This character is player one. If I want to grab, let's say, player four, that's player four, okay? Same things when it goes to like Simpsons, if you wanna be Bart, Bart is only player three. So same thing. And controller two. And again, you could literally see the LED at the top of what controller it is. So you basically press X across the board. And now you have four player action going on. And it's cool, NBA Jam, The Simpsons, TMNT, just to name a few, four player action. Same thing if you think about it, player one is your main person as far as load and save state. So if I wanted to save exactly where I'm at, hold select, and I press R1 and it'll save. So if I move over, let's say I wanna load, you hold select, and then we're back. If you're done playing, same thing, select and start, and you exit out. So another popular uh, four player game is NBA Jam. So you can literally press X on NBA Jam. And again, I have all of the controllers on. And again, four player action. So there's a lot of credits already. And as you can see, as long as you press start. And boom. So now we have all characters in. I can press no. And the Knicks, just for kicks. And like I said, four controllers, NBA Jam. And there you have it. So you can literally play. If I can go through it. So again, I'm literally just pressing to get out of this. We'll get the tip off. So now player four. Buckets. So now remember you want to exit. So you gotta take player one, hold select and press start. And again, right now we are done playing. We're gonna turn off the system. So back on circle, back on circle and yes on attract mode. So next up, small features that you could do is that I have random game selector. So if you press triangle, it will just go to a random game in this wheel. So if you're just bored one day, you just want to check out a random game, you could do that. One last thing I do have on this is a track mode. Um, so basically after 45 seconds, the system will kind of go into the screensaver where it's going to show off all the games within this specific menu. Again, it's called a track mode. And if you leave the system alone, if you don't touch any controllers for 45 seconds, it'll kind of go through this kind of screensaver mode. And it's pretty cool. Um, you know, if you have a barbecue, you could let it just run in the background. And honestly, you do learn a lot of different games that you never knew was even a game just in a track mode. So it's pretty cool. I'm just going to show that off real quick. So again, 45 seconds and it will boot into its own thing. There we go. And again, it's showing off a bunch of arcade games. There is sound, so you could, there is audio to it and such. So keep that in mind. Again, the mini NES killer. There you have it. Real quick, we're gonna get ready to edit this video. So we're gonna exit the system, shut it off properly. So we just kind of wake it up. We're gonna go back, main menu, we go back, up, and we select yes on a track mode. And there we have it.